to do a feasting on rails and even sit down. <laughs> Uh, we were planning to do a feasting on rails and a feasting on air, which I was looking forward to. Um, and then the, both were going to involve international travel and then the dollar tanked. And so we put them on hold because I would rather not do them than do them badly. Um, but I would do another feasting on asphalt. I don't want to do another feasting on waves. Too hard, very hard, terribly difficult. Yeah, because when you're on a motorcycle, you just stop. It's hard to do that in the middle of the Caribbean. <laughs> With 40 foot swells, you know what I mean? It's, just, it's, it's difficult. But I, I would do it again. I would do it again if they, if they asked me to. Yes, sir? Um, I think that. Um, yes, you can project this one. I'm a middle school teacher, so I have to be able to. Um, the, sorry, you, I, have, I, have, I have watched every single episode of the There's still time left. <laughs> and so far as I understand, you haven't done many episodes surrounding uh, dietary restrictions. Um, like, not because until recently, I didn't have any dietary I do too. I think, I think doing shows about uh, the deal with food allergy situations would be really great. Um, the problem is the Food Network has this huge building full of lawyers. And when you start getting into medical advice, They like, it's, it's like in The Godfather, they go to the mattresses, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it, the problem is when you deal with allergies, allergies have to do with doctors, we don't get medical advice. The liability is simply too high. Not um, just like peanut free or gluten free, not saying medical, but just if you're doing a gluten free diet, here's a show. No, because even that, first off, generally people that have gluten free issues are, are look, just looking for trouble anyway. You know, not just, <laughs> There are people actually gather them up and, and you know, they, no, um, yeah. we have done a show that was about uh, re uh, replacements uh, for, for things and we did a gluten-free cookie, we actually used lentil flour and some other stuff, so we've done that. Uh, we may do more shows in the future that deal with replacements because we've kind of got a model for that that we really like, but we've got to be super careful that we don't cross over into anything that even uses the, the allergy word because people just, you know, you take a lot of responsibility, you're feeding people, and I, I don't want anybody to get hurt. Although it is funny to give my daughter just one peanut, because she blows up. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really great, it's like there's no, no food allergy anywhere in my, in my family going back five generations, or in my wife's family going back five generations, but my daughter's allergic to peanuts. Well, you know, how does that happen? You know, I think that's... What's that? Mailman? Is that how that happens? <laughs> I was thinking FedEx, so <laughs> faster delivery. <laughs> FedEx. All right, um, yes, sir. If uh, Food Network did swaps, what other show would you like to host? And who do you think would host the East Swap? <laughs> I would love to trade places with Sandra Lee for just a day. Then I could open a box of brownies and have a martini and call it a day. <laughs> you know? I mean, the is pretty labor intensive, but I think she can make like eight of those in a day. You know, eight of those? I'd like to see her host the too. I think that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> think that would be funny? Who do you think I should trade with? Guy. Guy Fieri? He's, his set has a pinball machine on it, so that would be nice. <laughs> but my problem is I can't say, awesome! Like, <laughs> how about Duff? I don't bake that well. <laughs> yeah, now that you see, I, 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 I've heard. <laughs> because most of his shows, people complaining about the thing that they're going to do. But I, actually, I like his show. I watch his show. I'm always, I, I, they do some wild looking stuff. All right, who's next? Yes, in the tie. Uh, Are you a lawyer? No. I don't. All right, just check. <laughs> Do all the Iron Chef, the Iron Chefs, are they all there in the beginning of the episode? No. All the Iron Chefs are not there at the beginning of the episode. Those are mostly stand-ins. We only have one Iron Chef at a time. 
You can't get them scheduled like that. You have to do the line, the alignment of the planets. Very rarely can you get them all in one place. Do you find it's heavily weighted Bobby Clay? What do you mean weighted? You mean the number of battles he does? I haven't counted. And does he do most? He does quite a few. Well, I'll tell you this. I know that his battles rate better than anybody else's. Um, I'll tell you something else. When he loses, he doesn't whine about it, which I like. I like somebody who can lose with grace and go on the next day and do it again. Who does? Who whines? <laughs> If I had to do it again, yeah, yeah. I'm too old to do it again. <laughs> I would talk her out of it. <laughs> uh, there, there, you know, more has been written about, uh, I mean, there's more great literature about food science now. It's, it's kind of, you know, accessible than, than certainly when I went to culinary school, um, you know, a dozen years ago, it was still kind of an emergent craft. There were a few um, instructors who really uh, talked about it. And one of my instructors, I have to give a shout out to Chef Michael Kahn. Where'd you go? You hear me? One of my instructors from New England Culinary Institute. Uh, These days, you know, you buy a copy of your OPD on food and cooking and a um, uh, hundred uh, good eats DVDs and you're pretty much on to culinary school. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> reason to go after that. No, I'm kidding, of course. Um, but there's a lot more being written now. So, I mean, you, you can walk into any bookstore and, and, and buy yourself five or six good food science books. And, and a lot more is being taught in culinary schools now. You know, real food science courses are being taught by scientists. And uh, to some degree, um, even in public schools and high schools, food is being used as a tool for teaching science, which I think probably wasn't happening. You know, and I don't even mean home ec, you know, home ec is bad, which is a good thing. In the back, yes, sir. You, standing. Anthony Bourdain is an amazingly talented writer, um, and if I could have written something half as entertaining as uh, um, Kitchen Confidential, yeah, Kitchen Confidential. <laughs> um, gosh, knows I would have his book on typhoid Mary. Has anybody read that? He wrote. Uh, it's, it's small, but it's an amazingly cool examination of the place of cooks uh, in, in kind of turn of the century, uh, and, and a really interesting uh, treatise. Um, he, he does seem to have made quite a career talking trash about people, um, which I guess is fun, and it seems to pay relatively well. Um, I, I've never actually seen him cook. Have you seen him cook? <laughs> I haven't seen him cook. So, I mean, I'm guessing that he can. He can smoke cigarettes and cuss, <laughs> which in this culture is maybe enough uh, to, to pull it off. Um, so, I mean, I, I've met him once, and, and I, I met him at the James Beard Awards back in, uh, oh, whatever year it was. That, I won. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I met him at the reception, and I was, I was such an admirer of his that I was kind of starstruck, and I just kind of stood there because I didn't know what to say to him, because I know he's such a smart guy. And then the next day, he went online and said, called me a really nasty name, because he thought I had been rude to him. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, kind of sad that he did that, but um, I got over it in time. <laughs> yes, ma'am. When I do shows like Search for Next Time Chef? Huh? Yeah. Do you find it difficult with working with the chefs that are competing because you have a favorite and that favorite isn't winning? I don't get, I don't have favorites. I don't. I absolutely could not care less. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care who wins. What I care about is the process by which they win. I do not spend time with them off camera at all because I don't want, I have great respect for them and what they do and they've got incredible skills and artistry. I do not care who wins. 
I only care that at the end of the day, whoever does.